So workforce enablement. Now picture a picture a world where you basically have, you know, you're all you're automated. You've got your PLCs, you've got all the work and all those kinds of things going on, and it's giving you the statuses and it's giving you alarms and things like that. That that's great. That that that's uh, that's the very basis of what you really want to do in terms of automation. However, picture a world where that that equipment, those PLCs, and those kinds of things now can provide and drive workforce activities. Picture um, a work uh, an alarm popping up, say a pump fault or something like that. It can actually then the system can drive that through an electronic standard operating procedure, and then from there it can go and it can actually create a work order. And then the person can go out with their iPad or whatever, complete that work order. You can capture labor and material. You, you've, you've got really the full cycle of the asset moving from the actual piece of equipment all the way through capturing labor and material along with best practices of what it took to solve that problem. That's my envisionment of uh, what workforce enablement is. Taking that investment that you've put into the system and leveraging it so that basically at the end of the day, it's driving these activities that's going to, especially the mundane things like uh, pump runtime, you know, maintenance on a pump after X hours of runtime. Why do you need to worry about that? Let the system tell you that. If the system tells you that, it drives that workforce activity, freeing those individuals up to do higher level things. And basically when you do that, then you're fully leveraging those systems. You're, you're leveraging that investment in automation. And, and uh, that's, that's my vision of workforce enablement.